How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be creating this really cool retro wave tutorial. It's really awesome. Uh, it has a lot of things going inside of it with some really cool materials. We'll be looping some animation within the material, creating just nice compositions, cool compositing. So we will get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with EV and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so this is the animation that we are gonna be done with by the end of it. If you render it, we're gonna have some really nice compositing effects right on top of it to really just set it in and make it look super nice. Uh, for those of you who are on Patreon, you can get this project file right now amongst some other really cool um, tutorials and materials. So if you wanna check that out, that's linked in the description if you don't already know about it. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new window right here and get in a blank Blender document. All right, first step is to model our text. So let's go ahead and hit Shift A and go to text. And then I'm gonna ta hit tab, backspace, I'm gonna hit caps lock and type in retro. You can type in your name, literally anything, YouTube channel name, all that fun stuff. And then we're gonna go here to the text settings over here and then on the alignment, we're gonna center it out and we're gonna go bring it to the middle. And then here, font is super important. So I went up, I went ahead and I just grabbed a really nice, this one, this one I'm using right here. I, I'm, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. All right, so right here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and double tech, double uh, click here in the outline and call it big, big text. And let's go ahead and shift D and call that one wire. I'm gonna hit the eyeball here on big text so we can't see it. And we're, let's make our wireframe really quick. So here in the text settings, we're gonna go from fill mode to none. And then here in the uh, geometry tab, we'll do 0 .002 uh, two on our wire, and now we have a wireframe. But we need to go ahead and array it. So let's go ahead and get shift A and get an empty plane axis. Click back on the model, click on the uh, modifiers, and let's go ahead and add a ray modifier, uncheck relative offset, and click on object offset, and select the empty. So if you click on this empty now and go to your little move settings, you can actually bring it down. You can see we now have that new duplicate. And then here, I'm just gonna give my uh, 20 duplicates. And now we have that. And if we hit the eyeball here on this, now we have modeled our text. Now let's go ahead and make our materials for these, uh, for these text objects. So I'm gonna go here, go to Eevee, and I'm gonna click and drag on these guys. And then here in your preferences, Make sure in your animation tab, your default interpolation is linear. So here on this top one, let's go ahead, click on that and go here to the shading tab. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse these two windows. I don't need them. And then I'm gonna bring this window up. And we're just gonna zoom in here so we can see everything. And I'm gonna go to the main render view. Let's bring our world brightness down to black. Let's click new. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the principle and delete it. And we need to go ahead and get in a mix shader. So shift A, search mix shader. And then let's go ahead and get an emission. Shift A, search emission. And then we're gonna get in a transparent. Make sure not to click on translucent, but uh, transparent. And uh, here on the emission, go ahead and select whatever color you want it to be. Um, let's go here. And then let's go ahead and shift A, search a color ramp. Plug that there. And let's get in a noise texture. Plug this here, and then if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, comes to Blender by default, just hit Control T and switch this over to Object Coordinates. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, crunch this in so now we can see this. So we're seeing two problems. One, I wanna bring my detail down to zero, bring my scale up, but see how this is black? That's because there's no transparency. And so the way we can do that is go over here and then here in Blend Mode, go to Alpha Blend and now we have our transparency and see, and we're gonna bring this in and let's go here from linear to ease and that's gonna give us a much better gradient between things. 
And then uh, I'm gonna bring my scale, I don't know, keep my scale there. And what's nice is see how that's pure black? I actually don't want that to be like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the black portion of the uh, color ramp and bring it up a little bit. And that's gonna reveal a little bit more of our emission material. And then we can bring that strength to like 30. And then um, that's probably too much, so 20. All right, so now we have that. We're gonna go on the noise texture to 4D. And we have now created this animation right here. And it looks awesome. All right, so maybe bring the scale of two so that we can just kind of focus on this and then bring this down a little bit like that. All right, so what we're gonna do now is just go ahead and um, animate the noise texture so we only have to do it once. So we'd have to do it on every single material that we apply to every single model because uh, that would just kind of get annoying. So let's go ahead and this noise texture, bring your W to uh, zero, and then I'm gonna hit Shift D, bring your vector to the vector there, and we're gonna get a mix, switch it over to color, drag it on there, and then plug factor into B. All right, once it loads, I'm just gonna go ahead and hover over here to the plus icon, drag that up, and get in a timeline. We're gonna go back to frame zero, and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit W, I'm gonna hit I on the W here, drag this over, hit I, go to the very end. I'm gonna drag this over, hit I, and then here we're gonna type in five, hit I. Now that we're here at the, uh, the very end, right over here on this new one, hit I, go to the very end, go back to frame zero, and since we did five on this one, we're gonna do negative five here and click that. And now our animation, if we go to the very end here, is a seamless loop and this is animating really, really nicely. I'm gonna bring this color ramp in kind of like this so that this gradient on the, the letters is a little bit better. That's a lot better, cool. All right, now what we can do is just title this, title this material big text and I'm gonna go ahead and click on this bottom one here. I just turn on the gizmos to make sure we knew it's clicked. Drop down, click on big text and now that's been applied there. Now here on this number two, I'm gonna click that so that this is a brand new material and I'm gonna type, call this wire. So let's make a couple changes here. One major change is this needs to be darker so we can have some visual hierarchy. And then this text up here, I'm gonna click on it. You notice it says big text. We can make this brighter. So here on this text, I don't wanna see the bottom of it. We're gonna, that's gonna be done with a uh, color ramp. Uh, so, sorry, with a gradient texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down Control and right click and slice that and slice that. So this whole animated chunk, we're just gonna move it out of the way for now. I'm gonna highlight these guys and move it over by hitting G. That's why I'm moving things, I highlight them and hit G. So we're gonna go ahead and Shift A and get in a gradient texture. Plug this here, plug this here. And now we have this gradient texture. If you move the X, you can see that that's working. So we need to move our Y down here, rotate it by 90 degrees and then move it down. And then this gradient texture, bring it all the way down to black. And we're gonna go from ease to B spline to make it the smoothest gradient we can get. And so that is what we're looking for right here. And then we can now bring up the strength a little bit. So now we have even better visual hierarchy done, but I still want it to kind of break up, just like this top one has these kind of broken, broken up pieces where it's not quite so bright in different aspects. So what we're gonna do now is get in another mix shader. So I'm just gonna duplicate this, and then um, we're gonna move this emission shader to the bottom socket and plug this transparent here. We're gonna go ahead and get another, we're gonna go ahead and get another color ramp plug that into the factor, and then this whole new animated section, I'm gonna click on the noise texture here and hit Control T so we can get a new mapping set up for it and then plug that here to the bottom one, and then plug this into the color ramp. So now if we bring this in, you can see it's gonna work, but let's go ahead and bring that scale to five on each of the noise textures here so that it's a little bit better. And then now we have both of them animating really nicely. So now that we have this established and our two materials established, I'm gonna go ahead and hover over this emission color, hit Control C. Here in our world settings, hover over this black portion, hit Control V, and then bring it down so we have just a little bit of, of, of a green in our world uh, color. And that's really gonna just smooth everything over, just make it look a little better, a little bit more cohesive. 
And then here on this material, maybe bring the brightness down a little bit. All right, cool. And then maybe crunch this in. This is a really nice looking text. All right, so now what we can do is go back to layout and then let's get our composition set up. So I'm gonna just position my viewport how I kind of want it to look. And then Shift A, camera, Control, Alt, Zero, snap that to view. And then in the uh, camera settings, we'll click on the camera, the outliner, a little green camera icon and go to orthographic. And then this is done really well, but if you can hit R to rotate and hit G to move it around, and I'm gonna bring in my orthographic scale a little bit, and then this is how it's going to look right now. Let's go ahead and create our wireframe. So I'm gonna to go to the camera view so I know how much space to take up. Shift A and get a plane, and bring it up something like this. Control A and apply that scale. I'm gonna hit tab, right click and subdivide. So for me, I'm gonna give it about nine cuts for this main one. And I'm just gonna double click and call this big wire. And then let's add in a wireframe modifier to it. So wireframe and then make it really skinny, something like that. And if we go to the render view, make sure it's selected, we can go ahead and apply the big text material to it. And now we have this. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna duplicate this and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to solid view, tab, right click, subdivide, and I'm gonna subdivide this one pretty significantly as a more subtle detail maker. So now if we go to that view, it's crazy. So let's go ahead and nurture the material for this, uh, these smaller pieces. So if we go here to the shading tab, make sure that this big wire 001, we'll call it small wire and then I'm going to go to my camera view and then I'm going to go here where it says big text I'm going to hit that number three and talk, call it small wire all right so now first thing we're going to do is just bring down the brightness of it so it's something like this and then I'm just going to go ahead and just use one noise texture delete these two right click and clear keyframes this one's just going to be stagnant we're going to bring the scale up and then you know, bring this over something like this and then make sure that it's not very bright. It's very, very subtle. We really want it to be almost unnoticeable. That's kind of the rule here, almost unnoticeable. And now we have this really nice looking scene. All we have left to do now is some camera shake and some compositing effects. So let's do the camera shake because that's pretty simple. It's even pretty simple to loop it. So let's click on the camera, make sure you're at frame uh, frame zero, go to your transform settings, and I'm just gonna go ahead and, now let's go to the animation tab, I'm gonna hit zero to go to camera view and kind of drag that over, and I'm gonna go to the render view here. And then on this guy, we're gonna go to the graph editor. So hit that drop down. make sure camera is selected in the outliner, see where it says X Euler and Y Euler rotation. Let's go ahead and select that, go to the modifiers and add in a noise. That's gonna go crazy, so we're gonna do it a scale of 15 and a strength of 0 0.02. Just very subtle. And we're gonna do the exact same thing here. Add modifier, noise, scale of 15, strength of 0 0.02. So now we have really, really subtle camera shake. But notice it's not going to loop seamlessly. If we go to the end of the frame here, watch how it kind of jumps. So we're gonna fix that. So go to the top X Euler, Click on Restrict Frame Range and start at frame 1, end at 250, and then blend in on 5 and blend in 5, and that's going to blend it in at the beginning and the end of the animation, and it's going to be totally unnoticeable because we're blending in and out that kind of camera shake going up and down. This is really powerful for making looping animations. We're going to do the same thing here. Restrict Frame Range 1, 250, 5, and 5. And watch, if we go to the very end of our animation, it is completely seamless. And that is what we want. Last thing we need to do is add some compositing effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit render image. And um, this is a good time to, to say the reason why it looks like that is because of motion blur. Turn it off. Now render image. All right, so now we have this. Let's click on the compositing tab. Click use nodes. Shift A and we're going to get a viewer node plug image there so now we can see it and then hold down shift and right click so that makes sure that all these compositing effects are going to go into our animation and not just sit 
in the viewer node. So now let's go ahead and get in a glare node. So all these cool glare effects are happening now. I'm just kind of moving things out of the way. All right, so now what we can do is bring your streaks down to two, bring your angle offset so that it angles the way the text is angled. So see how that's kind of there? It's not quite there, kind of overcorrected, perfect. So what we can do now is uh, bring your iterations up, bring your color mod so that it kind of breaks up like that and bring your fade up and then bring your mix down so that you can kind of bring down almost essentially your uh, opacity on this effect. Now let's do a lens distortion. And this is cool. So I'm gonna bring up my dispersion here and then I'm gonna click on jitter. And what jitter is going to do is introduce noise. And I really love that. I've turned off jitter. See how it's really smooth and really nice. Let's see if we can zoom in here. See how this looks really smooth and really nice. If I click on jitter, it introduces this noise and just makes it look a little bit more vintage, a little bit more retro, and that is what we want. So this is the final piece. If we go here to the uh, rendering tab, this is the animation. It looks awesome, it's perfect, it's cool, it's retro, it's done. Let me show you how to export this and we will be on our way. So click on the little printer icon, select your resolution. We're currently at uh, 1080p, which is what I'm happy with. And then right here on PNG, go to FFmpeg video. On encoding, go to MP4, medium quality to perceptually lossless. Render, render animation, let it, let it render out and you'll be all done. Thank you guys for watching. Again, if you wanna check this out, get the project file on Patreon or go ahead and check out Real Time Materials. All that really helps me support the channel, helps me keep doing this. Um, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.